This is the spark timer, also called the ticker timer, and it has an on-off switch here to turn it on and off. Uh, this setting right here changes uh, from 10 hertz to 60 hertz, and what that means is right here, these electrodes, when I turn on the power, uh, will send an electric current between the two tips at either 10 times a second or 60 times a second. So we're going to use for this lab the 60 hertz setting, which means sparks will be generated between the electrodes 60 times a second. I'll take my silver spark tape, which is a heat sensitive tape, and I'll run it through the machine. And I'll attach a weight to the bottom of the spark tape right here. What I'll do is I'll just tape a heavy object, in this case, this 9 volt battery. I'm just going to tape it to the spark tape, and then I'll release it, and the, uh, the weight will fall. It will pull the tape through the machine, and dots will be recorded on the tape 60 times a second. So of course, that means the dots will be spaced a 60th of a second apart. You can see where the pencil is pointing, there is a large cluster of dots. That's where the machine had been turned on, the ticker timer had been turned on, but before I dropped the tape. Then you see as you move away from the cluster of dots, you see dots, and as I move down the tape, you can see the dots get further and further apart. That's of course because as the tape falls, it begins to accelerate and goes faster and faster. Remember that the dots are spaced in time one sixtieth of a second apart. So as the tape begins to fall faster and faster, the dots are spread further and further apart. So here is a picture of what the spark tape might look like after it runs through the machine. Here's the cluster of dots before I turned the machine on and then as the uh, or excuse me, not before I turned it on, when I turned it on, but before the tape began to fall. Then as the uh, tape fell, the dots were generated a sixtieth of a second in time apart, and you can see that the dots get further and further uh, spaced apart because the tape is falling faster and faster as the weight that is pulling it through the machine accelerates towards Earth. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate a data table with these following columns we're going to uh, locate our first legible set of points as, uh, and label it as our data point zero. We'll say that that's our beginning point and time will equal zero and that will be our reference point for measurement of displacement and we'll explain what these two final columns are here in a minute. So label this first point zero and then the next point one and the next point two, three, four, five on down the tape all the way to 20. Okay, so that's going to go out to 20 and uh, the time of course is a 60th of a second apart so in our time column it will increment by 1 60th of a second for each line in the data table. Then our displacement is a measurement from the zero point to the dot that corresponds to the data point. So the displacement for line 1 will be the distance D1 labeled in my diagram here from 0 to 1. On line 2 my displacement will be the distance from 0 to 2 and displacement for line 3 is the distance from 0 to 3. You'll measure this with a uh, ruler. I suggest the first couple uh, sets of dots to be measured with a uh, clear plastic ruler with centimeter and millimeter markings on it. Then once you get to measurements that are longer than your ruler or further out than your ruler, 
switch to a meter stick. Okay, now, uh, so here it is described to you in the displacement column, 0 to 1 measure, 0 to 2, 0 to 3, and so on. Okay, now this delta displacement column, what that is, that is the uh, distance the tape has traveled since the last dot. So the blue line in my drawing here indicates the delta displacement, the change in the displacement since the last uh, displacement measurement. Okay, so if I want to find this distance called the delta displacement between 5 and 6, I subtract one from the other. Uh, so for example, uh, this distance right here would be the displacement measurement for line 6, which we don't see in the table, uh, minus the displacement for uh, line 5. So I've written those instructions here, the delta displacement. Uh, for the first one would be 1 minus 0, your displacement uh, measurement number 1, minus displacement measurement 0, which of course is 0. And 2 minus 1, 3 minus 1, or excuse me, 3 minus 2, 4 minus 3, 5 minus 4, and so on. That is called your delta displacement. And we know, here we see that average velocity is displacement divided by time. So what we're going to do is we're how far uh, did something travel divided by how much time it took. That's what average velocity it is. The total distance traveled divided by the amount of time it took. We're going to look at the total distance traveled as the space between the dots. So for example, up here, the space between 5 and 6, I'll use that delta displacement measurement. And the time it took to travel that distance is 1 60th of a second. So down here I see that calculation, the delta displacement divided by 1 60th. Of course, when you divide by 1 60th, that's the same as multiplying by 60. So to calculate the average velocity for each interval, it's pretty simple calculation. All you do is take the delta displacement uh, measurement that you got and multiply it by 60. Now you have to make sure your delta displacement numbers are recorded in meters. That way, when you multiply it by 60, you'll get an average velocity in units of meters per second. Okay, then when you're done, check your data to make sure you didn't make any uh, terrible mistakes. Uh, all data columns should be continually increasing. And after the last line in your chart or your table, which is 20 over 60 seconds or one third of a second, your average velocity should check uh, with our equation for the velocity of a falling object starting from rest, uh, which is about 3.2 meters per second. Okay? So your 20th uh, entry in your data table for velocity should be close to this number. If it's way off, then you've made some terrible mistake and you need to go back and check your work. Okay? And we're going to make graphs of this column as a function of time, displacement, and we're going to make a second graph with average velocity as a function of time. So that means displacement on the y-axis, time on the x-axis for your first graph, and average velocity on the y-axis, and time on the x-axis for your second graph. And you should see uh, graphs for displacement that should be uh, curved, and your velocity versus time graph should be a fairly straight line uh, through which you're going to fit a best fit line. Uh, follow the instructions in the lab handout to generate your graphs. Here is my data that I got from my ticker tape. You should see something on yours very similar.